It's rough out there, you know, in the world. Some of us turn to writing for solace and inspiration. Text that helps us take in the dark and find the light. So if you are someone who wraps themselves in words to warm your heart, or maybe just looking for a little help getting through the day, week, year, join us as we talk to people about the pieces of writing they use to bolster their souls and remember their way. The good bones that remind us we can make this place beautiful. Hello, and welcome to this episode of Finding Good Bones. Um, We are glad to have you back with us, dear listener. Uh, I am your host, Kate, and I am here with your other host, Amy. That was so natural. We're so smooth with this. It's fine. Yeah. Yeah. It's good. Two people, one mind. (laughs) That can be taken like both, you know, in a positive and negative light, I suppose. Yeah. Um, Yeah. But yeah, welcome to Finding Good Bones, um, a weekly podcast that is all about the pieces of text that help us sit with the dark and shift our perspective to the light. Um, I am very excited about our guest for this episode, Morgan Anderson. More on that in just a moment, though. First, Amy, what are you reading? Well, I'm in the middle of um, a trilogy in the Locked Tomb series. And, what is the um, Locked Tomb series? Well, let me tell and you. How problematic the first book, is it? Because it's it's fine. Okay. Um, it, so this was sold to me as lesbian necromancers in space, and oh, I was well, then, like, "Yeah, that's fine. All right, okay, yeah, golden." And, um, and that is an accurate description, but of course, it is more complex and yeah. dark. And we we're talking about finding the light in the dark. Nah, it's just it's, it's necromancers. Just it's necromancers, yeah. man. Yeah. But it's good. It's good. I'm about to start the third book. Ooh, yeah. Oh, well, then um, it yeah. starts with. Sorry, the first book is called Gideon the Ninth. Gideon. Oh, you know what? Ninth. My uh, my husband bought me. I have that book. I'll you should read it. it. We'll talk yeah, about it. Yeah, it's sitting on on one of my shelves. Um, okay. Currently, I am reading Cabaret uh, for a potential other project that I would like to work on, a live one, maybe called uh, a Cabaret: at The Beginning of the End of the Patriarchy. We'll see. Um, it is very much like a textbook. Um, actually, it might be a textbook. It might be reading a textbook for fun. But it is uh, all about uh, the art of cabaret and how you know what what is come what has gone into it, the different time periods where it's popped up, kind of how it is looked in those different time periods. And it's a textbook, but it's really interesting. So <laughs> read textbooks for fun. Um, So that is what we are reading, but that's not what this is about. This is a podcast that is all about pieces of text, literature, writing that uh, that we love, um, that really do help us live in this world that we are all in. And uh, our guest today has brought us um, a beautiful piece that is also quite heartbreaking. Um, First, I will introduce, I don't know why I'm keeping it like a secret, like, ah, our guest. Um, Morgan, (laughs) hi. Hi. Welcome. Hello. Well, thank you. Um, We're so excited to have you here. Morgan is a horticulturist, feeder of crows. She does. She has like at least two murders, um, which I deeply... I'm very envious of. Um, She has uh, aspirations of becoming a falconer. She lives in Seattle, Washington, where she enjoys the mountains, lakes, and beaches because she has all of those in Seattle. Um, (laughs) And she is currently working on a loving, new, and improved self, although I have known Morgan for quite a long time, and I love her. and so I, I'm excited about all of ourselves, new and improved or, you know, just all of you. Hi, welcome. Thank you so much. I love hearing a bio about my phone. Yeah, yeah, it's not <laughs> awkward at all. That's always Not awkward one bit. What good bones have you brought us today? <clears throat> so uh, I brought a 
poem called The Middle Place by Rupi Kaur. And uh, it's a short little poem. Would you like me to mm-hmm. read? I would love it. Yes, please. Mm-hmm. The middle place is strange. The part between them and the next is an awakening from how you saw to how you will see. There is where their charm wears off, where they are no longer the god you made them out to be. When the pedestal you carved out of your bone and teeth no longer serves them, they are unmasked and made mortal again. (sighs) That's fantastic. This is a great book, but yeah, that's one of my favorites. <laughs> yeah. So, so on that, how how did you find this piece? Um. Well, I feel like I have had this book for quite a while, and I kind of pick it up. Mm-hmm. I'm feeling kind of, you know, some kind of way, and it can be any way, like sad or really happy or like contemplative or introspective. I just thumb through it and go, there's probably a poem in here that will make me perspectivize. <laughs> yeah. 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 Right. Where it's like, mm, I feel like having a feeling. Yeah. yeah. I'm not sure quite what that feeling is yet. Let, <laughs> yeah. Feeling and then flip um, it through. It's yeah. kind of like the literary equivalent of throwing the dart on the map for the road yeah. trip destination. <laughs> sure. I love it. Like that. Then this one, this one's a good one that's been thumbed through a lot. So yeah. <laughs> What is there anything in particular about this poem? Have you like returned to it more than once in your? I I I know I've read it before, but I haven't returned to it more than once, and it kind of jumped out at me just the crack in the spine. Uh, recently, going through breakup stuff. Ooh, one popped out. <laughs> I was like, yeah, oh. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> Is there, I mean, it is, it is, it feels very much like a breakup stuff <clears throat> sort yeah. of a poem. Not uh, not, and if I may say, not necessarily a breaking up poem, but like, you know, that, that middle place, the kind of middle place, the heartache and like the desire for something new and like a change in the scene and a change in your emotion, like when you're ready, mm-hmm. kind of place getting ready to move I think it definitely feels yeah like a or or at least to me reading it and then hearing you so beautifully read it um there there is a lot of space or it, it's space of you know it, it's very evoking of that feeling um and I think of kind of like a limbo yeah. right where <laughs> there's what you've left be- left behind and you know about that um but then you know what is ahead yeah. And uh I I loved the piece though, but also like in the looking back. Mm-hmm. Right? Cuz this is still a poem about, you know, I guess that's also a nice juxtaposition. It's a poem about being away from it, but being able to look back and maybe see it a little bit yeah, more look- for what it was. Exactly. I think that's kind of why it stands out for me in this period specifically because I'm like in that place of understanding what part of that experience was narrative and mm. Uh, mm. pedestal that you build and the God that you make somebody Ugh. and what part of that is reality. Yeah. It's always kind of a shaker. <laughs> mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. I also I love, love that. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I love the, the idea of what is narrative, the stories that you told yourself about, um, about the previous God. But I also like how mm-hmm. the middle place is in between what you're leaving and then what's coming forward. And it doesn't actually imply what's coming ahead of, of you. It talks about what's behind you, but it doesn't tell you what's coming up. Yeah. But I think kind of towards the end, like being reminded that your last partner was mortal and not, you know, the God that oh, yeah. kind of sets you up for the next one to kind of go into it with that mentality that I can make this person a God or I can mm-hmm. them be mortal mm-hmm. kind of in this yeah limbo. <laughs> I think too, you know, it strikes me that perhaps there has to be that looking back and that understanding of the narrative that, that I attached alongside the actual reality in order to be able to move forward mm-hmm. and not just stay back in that place. Right. 
Yeah. Um, I think there is the word unmasking in there. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it feels very much. But I also love the pedestal of bone and of, of like my, my bone and yeah. <laughs> not <laughs> theirs, right? Like it is my body that has been holding, it is me that has been holding them up there. There's a lot of sacrifice, but also a lot of power in that. Yeah, definitely. There's also just kind of another reminder that like that pedestal, like no one deserves that pedestal, that it's kind of a curse in a way too. Like you're, you're only doing yourself a favor by pretending Mm -hmm. the ivory tower exists and everything's perfect within it. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And I love that you say (laughs) ivory tower because what is ivory if not bone and teeth? Ooh. of elephants but yeah mm-hmm. ours too <laughs> yeah yeah is there you know I, I guess you mentioned that you are in a particular time right now and kind of moving away or in this space between um a prior relationship and whatever's coming next um is there a particular line in this that is helping you or is it just or is there one that you love um I don't know that there's one line that I love particularly I think the what the god that you made them out to be kind of stands out to me because that Mm -hmm. was drinking knowledge of the breakup was like wow I really did tell myself a lot of things and made them into something that they're not yeah but the whole feeling of the poem I think is what I like about it it's so brief but it almost makes me cry every time I read it. Oh, that's a good one. Mm-hmm. <laughs> so that's one of those barometers, right? Like, <laughs> do I cry every time right? that I read this? Do I struggle to say the words out loud? That then <laughs> check. It's a favorite. I also, I like where the charm wears off. Yeah. Um, there's, yeah, very evocative, I think, especially. Um knowing kind of also having the sorry sorry dear listeners having the insight of of kind of the relationship that you were in before and knowing how much kind of charm and and surface could play into that and i think there's also kind of two contexts like if you use this poem to frame a past relationship it's one thing but you could use the poem to frame even a current one Mm -hmm. in the middle place of a relationship to realize that those (sighs) All the all the newness and happy puppy yeah. dog feelings from the beginning start to the charm wears off, and then you have to be you're faced with, you know. I love that. What are we yeah. doing? Are we building a tower or are we being mortals? <laughs> yeah. Or also, how do I so so I could serve a god, right? But that's probably not sustainable. If this is a place that I want to stay in, how do I live with a person? Yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I don't know if y'all have ever lived with a person, but it's hard. I have it's lived hard. with mm-hmm. <laughs> I've lived with lots of people. It weirdly gets uh I'm not gonna say easier. It gets more familiar. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and it I don't know that it ever gets easier. It depends on any person that you ever live with. So Oh yeah. But again, I love I love that in that other interpretation, right? Where yeah taking off the mask is actually something instead of something that's healing um you know like oh wow thought he was a god but actually or they thought they were a god but wow they were a real asshole um but there's also like oh i've been treating you like a god in this relationship that we're in actively but you're a person with me yeah Um, and that seems to me like something that is uh important in actually having a a healthy, healthy relationship. Agreed. <laughs> and then there's a little bit of the framing too, where it's like, it's not them. I did this. Yeah. Right. Like, yeah. Which, I mean, we could go off. You could take several ways. Like I did this, I have power or I did this. I'm shooting myself in the foot or I mm-hmm. get you mm-hmm. like, you know, there's a lot of different, it's just, I think this poem lends itself to a lot of different frames for a lot of different relationships not just romantic ones either oh absolutely Mm -hmm. the things we tell ourselves and like to touch back a little bit like making somebody a god you know i don't think that the other option is necessarily that they're horrible Mm -hmm. that they're a man they're just a person everybody has their own 
perspective and their own narratives going on for themselves. And like, everybody's just kind of trying to figure out how do we people together? Yeah. The permission to be mortal, right? The permission yep. to be fallible and have flaws and make mistakes, I, you know, and, and get wins and have triumphs and like all the things. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. It's, um, we are all trying to figure out how to people right? <laughs> together, right? Like, I think that it's the together too, that, that gets so hard. We can all like, or at least I have the experience where I'm like, oh yeah, I've learned how to people by yeah, myself alone in, is no in this vacuum. I'm so balanced <laughs> and reasonable. <laughs> very centered and grounded I here well -rounded. alone <laughs> with nobody else. I'm doing great. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. How familiar are you with, with this author? Um, uh, have pretty familiar. Yeah, for her books, and I, I've read this one more. Mm -hmm. The other familiar to me. There's actually, you... actually a whole other poem here that I feel like does the same. There's a bunch. I look yeah. like, yeah. that one. And I was like, "There's actually lots of ones in here." Um, if I could have read you a whole book, I would have read you the book I was reading. <laughs> yeah. What uh, can you tell us? Uh, what do you know about her? Um, or can you tell us a little bit about her? I don't know that much about her as an author, to be honest. I haven't really done a ton of research. Like I've uh, mostly just read her poems and recommended them to other people. Oh, well, that's enough. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Probably you should dive in. Just be like, Who is no, this? no, you're not teaching a course. Like, like I think like, sometimes just knowing the name and sending people on. Well, I feel like knowing the poetry gets to know the person too. Like, absolutely, they're all kind of little confessions, and I don't know. She seems like a very tortured person. Not tortured, but experience seems like not the right word. But has lived like a very worldly person who's been through a lot and has had a lot of pain and a lot of recovery and a lot of uh -huh. self-determination and, uh -huh. and has kind of come into her own right. It's kind of what I gather from her words anyway. Mm -hmm. It feels very processed. Right. There are certainly pieces that I have read where I'm like, oh, I'm, I am reading and I am experiencing the raw emotions out on this page. Um, but this feels like a very processed poem. Like it's been very thought out and very um, healed. Yeah. Curated, <laughs> right? Like, and that it can be taken in, in several different perspectives. So uh, thank you so much, Morgan. Um, that was an excellent poem that you have brought uh, and a wonderful discussion about it. And I certainly, I now feel like very dreamy. And like, maybe I'm in that middle space. Um, we'll put a picture of the poem. There's also a person looking out from a bridge and like, there's not fog in the picture, but there's fog for me in the picture. It's very, it's very moody and I, and I love it. Um, thank you listeners for listening. Cause if you've made it here, you've been listening. Um, this is the part of the show where uh, at some point we will, uh, read somebody's request for a recommendation for uh, a piece that they like, but we don't have that yet. Um, so here's how you can help us do this segment. Um, you can email findinggoodbones at gmail.com or go to our website where there will be a form. And you, dear listener, if you are a person who really finds solace and, and perspective and whatnot in, in pieces of text, you can give us a bit of information about yourself. And we on this show will tailor a good bones for you. Um, we will do that. But not today because nobody's done it. Because uh, we haven't really invited anybody to do it. So thank you so much for joining us again, Morgan. Thank you for bringing your experiences and this piece to us. Amy, is there anything you want to say before we go? No, I'm just, just going to keep. I, no, no, but I, here's what I want to say is that uh, I'm going to keep reading this poem like all oh, day. Yeah. This, yeah. this is awesome. Thank you. Thank you, Morgan. You're so welcome. Uh, and thank you listeners for joining us as we go finding good bones. <laughs>